Hey guys, in this video we're going to be building a new computer for the video studio. This is going to be built with Linux in mind and we're going to be running open source video editing, audio and graphics design software on it. Um, I'm using, I have a used graphics card that I'm using for this, also a used power supply. Everything else is new, I believe, maybe I used a solid state drive. Pretty economical build. I built this with um, price in mind, so keeping it um, the best performance possible with the least amount of investment possible, more or less. So this case just happened to be on sale, and I really didn't even do much research about it. It just seemed cool, but it's uh, it's got this glass. So this is this is all tempered glass. Every side of it has got uh, tempered glass. It's crazy. I was wondering why it was so heavy. I think I'm gonna leave on, uh, just so we don't get anything scratched or anything, I'm gonna leave this plastic, protective plastic on until the whole thing's built, and then we'll take that off, and it uh, should be awesome. This also has built-in, I think, uh, RGB uh, light, so I can change the color of what the inside is. Okay, I wanna show you a couple of the parts of the motherboard here, if you're not familiar with them. So what we have, this is the socket for our processor. It's an AMD processor. So the socket you have um, needs to fit with a processor you have. We have four slots here for DDR4 RAM memory. This is the main power connector that will go from our power supply to the motherboard. There's also a secondary power connector here. It's an eight pin. This can either be a four or eight pin, but this one uses an eight pin. We have our graphics card will sit in this bay right here. We also have other expansion slots. If we have cards we wanted to add in, we can have up to three graphics cards directly into this motherboard. Over here is where all of our connections will be made for USB ports and also for the power switch and the reset switch on the front of the machine. Usually over here by the processor, we'll also see some different things, uh, places we can plug in for fans. So here we have two um, CPU fans. And around the board, there's some other ones. We see some over here as well for system fans where we can hook on and it'll send power and also speed control for the fans. All right guys, so that's the build. Now we're gonna put some software on it. Just a couple things. I didn't end up using the Blu-ray reader and writer because the front of this case actually doesn't have any bays. It's just solid tempered glass, which is fine with me. We'll put that in another build. Also, I used to, ended up using different RAM than this stuff here, which is really good. But I had, this is a single stick of 16, and I had two eights that have uh, RGB, like they change color, red, green, blue. And so since this is a whole RGB build, I figured I'd just throw those in there. Um, let's put the software on and see how it performs. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna power it on for the first time. I actually normally do a power on self-test with the board, but I didn't do that this time. I just threw everything together. None of these parts are tested, except I know the power supply was working, came out of a working build. Same with the graphics card and some of the solid states. We already see some activity just in the back happening there. We see that lighting up just from having power applied. We see a green light on the graphics card. So I think everything's hooked up. I'll just hit the power button and see what happens. So we have some activity. We'll see what happens on the monitor, if anything. Our RAM lights up, that's kind of cool. Um, sometimes I've had it take as long as like two minutes on certain graphics cards before anything gets put out to the screen. So depending, and then also sometimes I have to change the, the port it's plugged into. So right now we're using DVI, but we have, um, we have like some HDMI and display port as well. So, oh there we go, so now it's coming up. So that took about 60 seconds. But now we're getting some output to the screen. I'm gonna wanna hop into a setup real quick here and just see, awesome. So, okay, this is a good sign. It's recognizing our, our processor, recognizing the memory. And so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and reboot and put it in the jump drive and install the operating system. All right, so I'm gonna try and install um, Solus Linux on here, Solus OS. Um, it can be a little tricky sometimes, not that tricky, but. So what we need to do, I'm turning on the computer, I put the jump drive in the back of the computer, and I'm gonna hit the F8 key. So 
we'll just boot from the jump drive. What it's doing now, it's loading the files into the memory of the computer. It's not installing anything. Nice. So we're here in, um, this. like I said, this is all just loaded in the memory of the computer. Nothing's been installed yet. Um, so you could actually try out Solus or lots of uh, Linux operating systems this way if you want to. And then to actually install it, we go to, where do we actually go? One of these maybe. Install OS. So we click it. So it comes up. We'll follow the prompts on here. And uh, get this installed. And then uh, I'll reboot and hopefully everything loads up and it's just fine. All right, so Solus OS is completely installed now. I ran updates. Um, this is just running directly off the computer. The thumb drive's completely pulled out. And um, I just wanna show you here. So if we go to the software center and we can just go to search, it's actually very, very simple for installing um, software. It used to be kind of difficult to get Linux software installed properly, but with Solus and a lot of op uh, Linux OSs these days, um, I just search Inkscape, click on it, click install, um, type in my password and that's it, it's on there, ready to go. So I can do almost all the software that I use is here in the software manager, and it, it's up to date with the latest version, and when I run my system updates, it'll update to the latest version as well, which is super, super cool. Uh, so this kind of helps keep the system up to date and running smoothly. Okay, I'm gonna shut down the computer now and take it into the office where it's gonna be. We're gonna get the keyboard and mouse with it that, that are gonna go with it, hook it up to the monitor that it's gonna be on, uh, and so we'll check it out in there. All right, the computer has moved into the office now. We have it hooked up to the Acer Predator 34 inch widescreen curved. And here's the new home of the tower. So it's gonna be really nice. Let me show you a little bit what I have going on here for my setup. So I'm actually running a 750 watt uh, UPS uh, battery backup system. This is the tower we just built. I've got a little four port switch right here. Just powering some things right here. I have my wireless on the wall. I have a network attached storage drive, like just a single drive that I use sometimes. Uh, it's like a four terabyte, I think. And then here's just some of the sound. This is actually pretty cheap. These are like maybe a buck a piece. And I just glued them to the back of a... Uh... I, should, I should do a full tour of the studio sometimes, but I should do. Anyway, this is, the, this is gonna work really nice, I think. So we've got the, the computer here, and uh, everything's gonna be pretty nice with this. So hopefully it's not informative, everything's just stock here. I'll give you a tour maybe once I get all the software installed on there and uh, let you know how it's working out. I'm still kind of fine tuning it to see uh, if I'm gonna stick with this OS or exactly what I'm gonna do, although I think I am gonna stick with this OS. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching and catch you in the next video.